What up, it's your boy Darth back at it again with another video. And today we're here with To Your Eternity Season 2, Episode 4. Last episode, we were introduced to <laughs> my favorite character so far, um, Bone something La Tasty Peach Uralis or something like that. He is a delight, and I he is flamboyant. He is colorful. He is loud. He is, he is he is crazy, weird, and he 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 seems like something straight out of JoJo. And he he is a great character. I really enjoyed him. I even like his, his little family that he has with like his his short ass dad and and his um basketball player of a of a mom. It it it's great. But we also got a bit of a love triangle or a potential love triangle uh, between Bone, um, I was about to call him something totally different that from a completely different anime, but Fushi, <laughs> um, Bone, Fushi, and uh, I, what is his name? Ha, ha, ka, ka, Something like that. I, f I forget his name. The, the, the descendant of Hayase, I'll remember it soon enough. Um, I was I was taking too much stock in trying to remember all the Hayase descendants and ended up forgetting uh, his name as well. It's like Ko Koaku or something like that. Um, so, really interesting stuff. This is, a, this is I'm actually really interested in uh, where exactly this is going to go. Um, especially with with like the the war against the the knockers and stuff happening so we're gonna hop straight into this if you haven't already subscribe like comment all those so if you're just a lurker i appreciate you too if you have any requests whether it be more uh to your eternity or something totally different you can uh the best place to put uh send that in is always my social media links gonna be in the description below or you can comment below that's cool too um and if you want these episodes early and the full length reaction to these episodes uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Link's going to be in the description for that as well. Uh, we also have a Discord if you want to join that and talk more anime. So, with all that being said, let me get my headphones. Make sure that they're on. Them bitches is on. And let's just get into it. In three, two, one, go. Oh, wait. No, I can't, can't look at this. Can't look at this. Um... I think I said this in the last episode, but um, somebody said I, I could watch like the first 45 seconds of this um, roughly. I'm not taking the chance. <laughs> I thought it over and I was like, yeah, I'm not taking that chance. Uh, I, I would like to watch it and I'm sure that it is a great OP. I'm sure that it looks amazing and I wish I could watch it. But la last time I, wa I watched this OP. <laughs> Uh, was right before Piotron died, and it, it low key spoiled me, but it didn't. It it wasn't that big of a spoil. Uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't that big of a spoiler. But I'm not I'm not chancing it. I will. I watched the OP on the last episode, and it still fucked me. <laughs> Best bonus award. A tasty peach Uralis. Oh man, Bon Summer. He's great. He's steamier than before. Oh, he's great, bro. He's the best character we've gotten so far. <laughs> he's great, bro. This man is perfect. T -t 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 Jesus, Kablooey. <laughs> Man, your superpowers will surely come in handy. <laughs> oh, man. Bro, bro. <laughs> God, I love this, this family. Oh. Uh. Oh, telling the truth, yeah. <laughs> He's great. That disgusting. 
So he made a bed out in the middle of nowhere. Oh. That's so incredible. <laughs> Ooh, good question. Actually, I they yeah, I I'd never thought about that. <laughs> which which says that this is not read. Well, of course it's not. Oh, just have a good time. Why not make a friend? Yeah. Why not go live life and do exactly what Pioran uh, told you to do? <laughs> I believe him. Thanks for the crap. <laughs> Morny Fushi son, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> ah! What the? Oh, that's a stallion for real. Ooh, that's a stout. My precious handkerchief. Uh that thing's gone. <laughs> that thing's gone, big dog. You are a demon. <laughs> oh, you're a demon. Okay. Um. Also, but I just I just remembered. Um, because I was thinking about the. Uh, I was watching Bone be Bone, but I, that horse, it's the five. Right, it's, it's only when, but you gotta be, seems like you are. That fucking, ooh, bro, that horse. <laughs> I think it can happen. The world's a big place. <laughs> I'm fucking dead, bro. Men or women? He doesn't even know. Girls, probably. I was a boy for a long time after. Okay. Hmm. Right. So he doesn't know the ins and the outs of like love and stuff like that. Like once you get into like the the real complex feelings, and love is a complex feeling, of course. Let's go! This week's best bonnets award goes to Fushi. Let's go! You know what it is. Stop playing with him. Let's go! Godspeed. That's the Church of Bennett, whatever it's fuck. And you look fucking weird, dog. You look so weird. What? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, wow. What the? Oh, he is a fucking uh medium. What the fuck? <laughs> Dang, he had a snitch on God. That's such. <laughs> he was already. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, that's crazy. So Bone is like the literally the opposite of Fushi. Well, in a in in a way, he is. Oh, okay. We ain't with none of that. <laughs> Love, you say? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Huh? What the fuck? What is about to test his blood or something? Oh, that's where he got it from. What? Forget about her. It was fucking... What? It was Tanari? Oh, he's gonna see. Oh, that's so cool. He's like you'll you'll know who it is. You'll see. You'll see Big Oni Goom. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, bro. Tanari is the goat. Oh, that's not you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Oh my god, me and Polk. Oh my god. That's hilarious. Yeah, you're not you're not cut out for this, buddy. Yeah, you're not cut out for this, buddy. Oh. But maybe your best self isn't the king. Maybe it's something greater, Bone. So that's why. That's why he won. Why he's so enamored with Fushi. Oh shit! With big Oniguma, huge. That's so cold. Man, he got that ensemble with him. He got that motherfucking ensemble with him. So they all just follow him. That's crazy. I thought they had all moved on. But Fushi gets to... It's really weird. So Fushi is seen as like a ticket. Oh, that's it? What? Man, Bone is such an interesting character. He is really, really fucking interesting. I, I, they're basically opposites in the way that they they lived and grew up. So fucking cool, man. So cool. Okay, man. All right, Bone is is Bone is is my favorite character. <laughs> He is easily my favorite character. He is a goat. He is a fucking goat. Um, the interesting thing here about Bon is the way that he grew up here. Uh, the way that he grew up in, in like, just in general, right? Um, we'll talk about. Well, there's all there's some other small things that that we should talk about in this episode, but. Um, I want to I want to spend the majority of this discussion talking about him because he he's proven to be more than just an interesting character, more more than just a, a funny character, right? Like he is funny and he's in, you know he's interesting and all this other stuff, but he seems to be really important actually. Um, and what I mean by that is, is um, not 
not as in like oh he's important to the story in a meta perspective or he's important he's important to uh fushi uh you know from like if you're looking at from like what fushi needs uh in like in his life um it's something more in the in the middle of of both those things right um the the interesting thing about about bond is that he uh like like i said he lived life almost opposite to fushi in the in the way that he dealt with like spirits and stuff right fushi being able to create non-living things um and whenever he tries to create something that's living it's dead right um he doesn't fushi can't exact i don't think fushi can exactly talk or see the spirits right um there are moments in which he can like when he was talking to uh when he was talking to uh what's his name fuck gugu uh when he was talking to gugu he he was able to kind of communicate with him and even then i don't know if he was just talking in general because he knew that gugu was dead and he had seen gugu pass on so he knew that gugu was around like his spirit was around but the only moment that they really started to communicate or were on the same wavelength was when their bodies kind of did that fusion thing where um where fushi became uh became gugu and gugu gugu's ghost merged into fushi's body or uh merged into fushi's fushi's form of gugu and that's the only time that i really remember fushi convening with the spirits uh for like on a more personal level right any other time i think fushi is simply talking at uh talking at, at, at the void in a way knowing that they are around whereas um bone whereas bone doesn't while he can't make you know he can't make make un you know unliving things or uh non-living things out, out of thin air or anything like that or you know or create dead husks or anything like that what he can do is actually convene with spirits right so he is a so he's actually a medium uh that can you know talk with spirits um actually have conversations with them and stuff right um the interesting thing with that is that uh since since bond sees everything as he said since he um you know he sees the ghosts and he sees the living people it's almost like a mob psycho kind of thing where since he sees the ghosts since he see in he sees the living people and stuff like that he has a uh, a different perspective than everybody else um and what what is so important about that for fushi is that what fushi needs is a perspective that is that is both that is both from the living and in the dead right um i mean that i mean that in a way that like the dead can also we've we've learned in this episode that the dead can also teach you things right we've learned in this show that the dead can teach you things um it's just that fushi's the, the way that fushi has been doing it is a little bit different from the way that bond uh, has been doing it right um so with bond he's had multiple friends right <clears throat> he has had multiple friends that are um uh, uh that are, are not <laughs> not alive the, he's had ghost friends um and because and because of that he under he understands a little bit more of, w of what fushi needs instead of what fushi should be doing right um so i like i said in the last uh episode's discussion i really like the um I really like Bone and Fushi together just that like not even like just outside of like shipping them. I, I like them together because they are this uh, they they seem to be two halves of a 
of they seem to be two sides of, of a coin that I am that is important for Fushi to understand, right? Um, right now, Fushi is still is still learning, still growing, and all this other stuff. So he's going to need somebody like Bone in order to in order to further his in order to further his growth. Now, with all that being said, um, and you know the whole bone being being a, a medium thing um out in the air uh there is there my immediate thought when when my immediate thought when learning that he can actually talk to these spirits is is there a way for both of them to to like use their their abilities that their gifts um in tandem uh because as as i've said before fushi can't make he can't make like living things he can however make husks of those of those things so if 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 bone is able to talk with the, the spirits and Fushi is able to create a vessel for the spirits. Can they can Bone lead a spirit to the the vessel, or can or vice ver like vice versa? I just feel like there there's a way that that they could both use their their um their their gifts because the the time that the mo moment moment. The uh, that one time when uh, when Gugu merged with his own body, it has has been in my head constantly, constantly since since it happened because it was such a weird moment for for them to be like, uh, uh, what is this? I am in my own body. Why why is this happening? You know what I'm saying? It's it was such a weird moment um, that that now that we have somebody who could actually talk to uh to the ghost i wonder if he is able to like extract any information on what happened in that moment from gugu um we see that he was already talking to tanari so could he could could he figure out what gugu was feeling in that moment or what happened did anything happen why you know why did it happen things like that right um but all that to say like he is easily he is easily one of the most important uh people he is easily one of the most important people in fushi's life right now now I, I, with all that being said um this could be dang this could be dangerous in the way of the whole what's the word uh love triangle thing that they kind of are boiling up or cooking up um that i'm not 100 percent sure on uh here the thing is that like they i could see a world in which uh kahaku or whatever his name is it, it, it's like oh you're not fucking with him are you fucking with him and not with me oh i can't i can't have that and he's angry about that but in this episode we seen Kaku be pretty understandable uh so i don't want to like i don't want to put that um that assumption on him simply because his, his descendant was high like his great 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 grandmother was high essay or how many greats you need to put in there um so i don't want to like put him in i don't want to like give him that sin to uh to bear simply because of his lineage uh so I, i'll say that he he handled that situation really well in the moment where where he asked like fushi like so do you like boys or girls and fushi was pretty straightforward like well i, I was a guy for most of the time so i guess if i were to like somebody it would be a boy uh or who would be a girl you know obviously for Kaha, for kahaku and him being a guy he's like he's like well shit, <laughs> i'm out of the race you know um however um the way that the way that he was just like well i hope that you find love right 
is not something that I expect out of a descendant of uh, Hyacinth. However, that might just be the story telling us, like, by the way, you probably shouldn't, <clears throat> you probably shouldn't just assume, uh, you, you probably just shouldn't assume of people uh, in, in this show because, you know, just because he is, he is a whatever the fuck that is, <laughs> you know, I, I always forget the name of uh, of their clan uh yananome or something like that uh but because sim simply because of his, his lineage he is not he doesn't have to be i say crazy um he still wants to be around fushi he still has that infatuation he still has that um uh you know what do they call it in in episode one uh infatuation reborn or something like that he, he still has that re that reborn infatuation but the way that he uses it, the way that he handles it, um, could very well make the person right. Uh, and I think that that's what we're getting at here. So really, uh, really like, uh, though we haven't got a lot of Kaku, I do really like, like his, his character just by how, how he's handling, uh, certain situations. Um, and of course, bone is great. And him, you know, him being a, a medium or just being able to see spirits and stuff is um, is really good for for the story as well as it is for Fushi. Um, I will say we um, we got another one of those like five things that uh, spirit orbs or whatever the fuck it is, uh, which is I, I guess that that that's the five. Um, that comes from like people that are experiencing like uh so far it seems to be like positive emotions um we haven't i don't think we've seen anything from like uh like negative emotions just yet but i think it's more of like uh positive memories and thoughts and stuff like that which is something that i would assume that the spirit is comprised of um so we get more of that in this episode when we see the, the what's the guy's name? Uh, what do you say his name was? Toto is his name Toto or Toro something like that? A uh, little blonde, sh uh, short, uh, like stubby kid, uh, where the you know obviously he he's in love with uh, the prince, but he does not want to. Uh, he doesn't want to admit it because he. You know, He's like, oh, I'm a guy. Guys can't, can't, can't like other guys. But you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's very, it's, um, it makes sense why, why he, he's so, he's so against it. Cause he's like, well that at the moment, at this time, it, it, it's probably not so heard of. Um, in, in fact, I think I can safely say that it is, um, almost, it is almost completely un, unheard of at, at this time. Um, though it, it's not non-existent so for him to be like oh no way i can i can like i can like uh i can be in love with with the prince he's a boy and i'm a boy you know um but the interesting thing about that about that situation is more more or less the the fi that that came off of him but also that um this episode deals a lot with fushi learning to or learning that he will eventually have to find love and stuff like that right um the important part of that is is that the show is kind of sh uh, showing us that fushi is starting to get into the point of his uh, of his maturation where he needs to he need he's going to start learning about the more complex um emotions the more complex feelings of love hate and all this other stuff right um, because with even with Hayase, it wasn't hate, you know. Even with I with Hayase, it was more just ambivalence. Uh, he just did not want her around. Uh, even even when he was he was like, I hate you, you know what I'm saying? Like that was his first time ever like expressing that. Um, so now we're getting into the point of the story where we have to learn where Fushi has to learn more about those complex emotions uh which is which is cool that they saved that type of stuff for season two um season one was more just building up fushi lay, uh, letting the audience know what it what exactly fushi is who exactly fushi is 
and and you know what to what to expect from the show so having this uh having this episode deal so heavily with um you know f- well this season deal so heavy heavily with fushi getting into maybe not that the most healthy relationships right now but finally kind of getting people who are teaching him about these things is very is very important as well so um really really like uh getting the uh getting more of that type of uh that type of like those types of lessons for fushi um it's just something that he, he's going to have to have to start understanding um on top of on top of that there were some really interesting questions asked asked here where bon bon basically asked the the creator what does fushi get when he finishes his task which is actually a really good question because for some reason i never asked that like i never even thought of that question it is a very is a very important question because fushi is is being tasked to basically sustain and rebuild the world right the question is of course like yeah what do i what is the reward at the end of that and it is a very is a very simple simple answer a very simple reward but also very um very necessary for for just human life it's going to be necessary for fushi as well which is freedom um of course when I thought about it, yeah, what Fushi is doing right now is not freedom. Is very far from it. He, he is, he is learning, but he is learning because, because well, somebody brought him in, which is like people. I think, but there's no difference. He's learning. He, well, he he has a task, right? Um, and he, and of course, as we we've learned in. in the first episode of season two he can't really take it easy even when he did he was quickly rusted back into the fray of fighting the knockers and stuff so we could see we could kind of see fushi's uh fushi's freedom as uh the creator saying all right well you've done everything i you know you can you've um you you have you have preserved life and all this other stuff now go out and and continue living life right but that wouldn't exactly like when i think about that that wouldn't exactly if that even if that is freedom it wouldn't be a good life because fushi would continue um fushi would continue to live watch friends families and lovers die and he would do that at infinitum freedom might more might more or less be either death or the relent or fushi relinquishing his Im- his immortality um i think that would be more um uh, aligned with what freedom is in this show uh because you don't want to continue to have fushi doing immortal shit and having to do immortal shit because he's immortal, um, which is just sitting back and watching friends and family die. Uh, it is not, <laughs> that is not freedom and it is not a good, or at least it's just not a good life. Um, so hopefully that that's more, more of where the creator's headspace is like, okay, well, when he's done, I can give him the, uh, the okay to die basically um you know going back to what perona said like way back in like episode four it's pretty sad that he can't um dying is death is what death is what makes life so much more sweet uh, because it doesn't last forever um uh, and since 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 fushi can't die not only can he like it's just you know you he can't fully enjoy life in the cycle of life if he can't die um 
so th there's that as well uh fushi hope I, I i do feel bad for fushi just by being an immortal but to get back on track with this episode um we talk about like fushi uh getting like making friends and stuff like that and he is very adamant on on making friends which is good on fushi for actually being proactive in being like yo okay well who can be my friend and even asking like like oh which one of these horses would be my friend which we should talk about right now maybe i sound like a fucking crazy crazy person theorist guy <laughs> but that horse had lavender hair and i'm not even gonna go back to check because i am sure i, I am a hundred percent sure it did i'm a hundred percent sure that at least that horse had lavender hair Now here on this show we shoot from the, we we don't shoot from the free throw line. <laughs> if you've been here long enough, if you've been on the if you've been subscribed to the channel long enough or just lurking on the channel long enough, you know that we don't shoot from the free throw line. We shoot from half court all the time. <laughs> Should we be? No, we shouldn't because sometimes it makes us look really stupid. Or it makes me look really stupid. But this is something that I can't let go. In the in the final episode of last season, Pyoran asked to be reincarnated as something that could help Fushi. And if I remember correctly, my immediately my immediate thought was he could use a horse, and mostly because what Pyoran said before in that episode was that she used to be a workhorse. Now at the at the time i felt like i was i was grasping at, at straws more or less um and taking taking things too uh literal <laughs> but with when she was like yeah let me be reborn something useful i'm like well she, he ain't, she ain't gonna be reborn to another person and she's not gonna be reborn into a into a uh an inanimate object But now that I'm seeing this horse, nigga, is that, is that Pyoran? Like, is it, I, I was about to say, is that crazy to say? But no, it's not fucking crazy to say. The horse has lavender hair. Something that, something that is the only thing that tipped me off about, about the, the, um, the spoiler at the, at the end of, of last of the last episode in season one where i was like oh yeah but i guess i'll just watch the ending or watch the op and and it'll be fine to the last episode there's no way it could be a spoiler and fucking the little girl with the lavender hair and i saw that pioran had lavender hair and i was like oh she's dead and fuck, god damn it it's the same thing here where the horse has like fucking horse has lavender hair it's gotta be her right it's gotta be her right ain't no way it's not i'm not gonna go back i i, I i'm i'm 100 percent sure that's pure on i'm a this is the one time on, on my channel that i i am a hundred percent sure that is pure on any other time on my channel i'm just like hey take it with a grain of salt i'm not sure I don't know. I'm just, I'm this is just speculation. This time, there's no speculation. That is definitely pure dog. There, there it is definitely with a hundred percent certainty. And if I'm wrong, I, I'm. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> but I am, I am pretty sure I'm not wrong about this one. Um, but it's cool. So that it's cool because now we're reunited with uh Pioran. uh a couple of small things I, I should probably mention in this in this discussion um um is that while bond is a medium and he's able to sense spirits um uh, which 
uh, which I was about to say. <laughs> Since Bond is a, is a medium and can see spirits, which is useful, it's interesting that he wasn't able to see the creator. Now, it's not something like super huge and be like, oh, this this gotta this gotta mean this. But what I will say is that since he can't see the creator, it's safe to say that the creator is not human. Um, and and that a lot of you know, to be fair, a lot of people are, are saying right now, like, no shit. Like, yeah, no shit, he wasn't human. But it to have basically confirmation that he that the creator is at least and at least no longer human uh at at worst he never was um kind of tells me about kind of tells me about the creator right we don't have much uh characterization for the creator outside of he is the creator he he made he made fushi and we don't even know if he made the world right he we just know that he is the creator of fushi that's it right um, we don't know if he created life. We don't know any of that. We just know that he created Fushi. The fact that Bond can't see the creator and Bond is able to uh, is able to see spirits, meaning that the creator it is not human, it it hinders his it hinders his repu. Uh, is it reputation? I'm, 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 is that the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it just hinders his reputation on whether I should believe him on what Fushi should be doing right now as a human. And maybe that's that's the things that he's not he's not guiding Fushi as a human. He may be guiding Fushi as something else. And then the freedom is the freedom to be human. In which he takes off his his god mode and his immortality hacks and then he's finally human right um but it's just weird that that he wasn't uh that he wasn't like you know then again it would have been weirder if uh bone actually did sense the creator that would actually be weirder because then we'd be like oh shit, he's human or he was human, you know so it, it's just it, it, it's an interesting thing to, to point out um, that he's probably not. He's probably not. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know what he is, but he, he's something else, which, like I said, which is obvious since like episode one. It's just weird. It's just weird to get that that confirmation in that way. Um, but this was a fantastic episode. Um, really, really like the, the dichotomy between, uh, Bon and, uh, Fushi, uh, love Bon's character just in general. He is a, he is a fantastic character and I cannot speak enough on how good of a, of a character he is um but now we have bond going out uh with fushi aiding him on uh basically aid him for the for the charge on the knockers i believe um and getting and having this i what i really what i really like about the about this episode as well as seeing that seeing the, the struggle for power um, in in different way the way that fushi um the way that fushi causes this struggle for power which is actually something that was uh hinted at or foreshadowed uh with uh boozman who was like you know fushi eventually people are going to start fighting over your power and there will be wars fought you know because of your power um and this seems to be what boozman was foreshadowing is that um, the balance of power is completely uh, tipped, you know, tipped on it on its head when Fushi is in the when Fushi is in the mix. 
uh, and we're like we're just seeing that now with the Church of Bennett wanting to wanting to have Fushi, but then also having Bon who uh, wants to be the king, but you know isn't exactly fit for it. Which yeah, he's he's actually not. <laughs> um, you know, and him, you know, him seeing Fushi as his ticket to being the king. Now, me personally, I think yeah, Bon's not not fit to be a king like that that's obvious uh his brother is way more fit to be a king he, he is a way better king at least for now right but that doesn't mean that bond's calling the way that bond becomes a better person he exceeds his you know the way that he um rises rises to to his greatest pot potential that doesn't have to be uh being king it could be something way greater than being a king and hanging around Fushi, who is depicted as a holy, uh, holy warrior, whatever he is, and in some, uh, in some, like aspects, he is quite literally Jesus. <laughs> um, I believe that Bond could possibly be destined for something a little greater. Um, now, granted, once again, this is a this is the story of a of a of an immortal. So expect Bone to die eventually. Uh, you know, once hundreds, of, you know, once we get into like the time skips, where uh, you know you're like, oh yeah, by the way, it's been a hundred years. Yeah, expect Bone not to be, not to still be alive. Um, but so the story will continue on past Bone, like I expect it to. Um, but that doesn't mean that he could still be a part of something greater than just being a king. Um, so great episode. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, really like, uh, like the, uh, the, pol the, the politics of it. Um, but also just like the, the very minute details of like, um, the, the little boy being in love with the prince and, um, Kohaku being, li being like, Hey, by the way, who do, do you like guys? <laughs> and he's like, no. <laughs> Which is unfortunate for Kahaku. That's really unfortunate for Kahaku. Whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, this season has really been impressive with the amount of um with the amount of advancement that they that they've made just by just by doing a little a bit of a time skip. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And the characters that they that they've um introduced uh, while I I love the other last season's characters, March was incredible. Love March, Goo Goo, that's my boy. Rona, Pioran, all those characters are really cool. These characters, however, seem to be way more. They they the last characters, the last batch of characters were still very useful for Fushi's like maturation as a as a child that's basically what he was you know a baby but these characters are are a little more complex than the last and um and i'm really enjoy it really enjoying that though goo goo with like monster brothers that was really that was some complex shit <laughs> um shout out to tanari for being the mvp everywhere she goes even after death <laughs> um and just great episode just a great episode um but now i think we're going to head into battle soon here uh the knockers are 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 somewhere being menaces and i'm going to assume that that we're going to head that way very soon so um with all that being said if you haven't already subscribe like comment all the other stuff just a lurker i appreciate you too if you have any requests whether it be more uh to your eternity or something totally different the best place to that in as long as my social media links gonna be in the description below or you can just comment that's cool too um and if you want these episodes early or the full link for action to these episodes you can subscribe to my patreon links gonna be in the description below uh for that as well we also have a discord if you want to join that and just talk more to your eternity or any anime or show or whatever that we're watching on the uh on the channel or something completely different from anime it doesn't matter 
There's a bunch of shit going on. <laughs> so, with all that being said, let me get my off button ready. There it is. You all stay amazing, stay safe, and take care of yourselves.